Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Invisibly Beautiful, written by Marilyn of Many. The hot nighttime air blasting through the windows of the hovercar made conversation hard for all of us, but that didn't stop paint. She pulled her lizardly face into the car long enough to ask, Can we make her more deliveries to climates like this? It's great. Not waiting for an answer, she stuck her snout back into the glass. Uh, I'm just glad that the air is moist, said Captain Sunlight from the driver's chair. She was as fond of extreme tropics as the next scaly little heat seeker, but at least she was tactful about it. If this was an arid climate, we'd dry out in no time. Z snapped a pincher in irritation, adjusting the cold pack draped around his shoulders. He had another around his praying mantis hips. Aye, he declared, I'm glad it is dark. Sun this intense would fry us on the spot. This is not a temperature for any reasonable being. He cast a big bug eye in my direction, with what passed for subtlety. I hadn't spoken up yet because I was busy guzzling water to replace all the sweat I was losing. Agreed, I said when I came up for air. There's a place this hot back home. We call it Death Valley. Paint leaned back into her chair. What? How could such a lovely heat mean death? It's so nice. For you, I said at the same time as Z. I would have high-fived him but didn't want to hurt myself with on his pinches. Instead, I said... I'd die of heat stroke in no time. But you have that temperature regulation, Paint said, waving a hand in my direction. I thought you were fine in hot and cold. Just because I'm warm-blooded doesn't mean I'm comfortable in all temperatures, I said to my scaly crewmate. Holding up an arm, I asked, You see the sweat? This is not fun. I was wearing the smallest amount of clothes I could stand. Sports bra and sports, and it was still too much. At least the wind helps. I'll want to get the unloading done as quickly as possible when we stop. We're almost there, Captain Sunlight said, pointing at the navigation screen. It was a good thing that she had a screen, since the view outside was an endless nightmare of seashore with sand dunes and rocks, but no memorable landmarks. You'd never know there was a civilization here. We'd been instructed to land our ship far inland so that we didn't risk blowing sand into a burrow when we took off again. Luckily, the harbor car was acceptable. Thinking about dragging all those crates across the dunes by hand was enough to make me need another drink of water. When we settled into the park, it was beside a boulder at the very edge of the water. Gentle waves lapped at the very flat shore. No civilization that I could see. The air gushing in the windows was oppressively hot and wet. The client should join us as at any time, Captain Sunlight said, getting out of the chair. Let's unload. Ah, Paint said. Z led the way out the door while focused on taking deep breaths. This was unpleasant. Sunlight insisted on keeping all but the dimmest lights off for the sake of the client's nocturnal eyes. The many stars helped. Luckily, there wasn't much around the trip over and the boxes were head-sized, not gigantic hassles. There were a lot of them, though, and we weren't quite finished stacking them on the wet sand when the client rose from the waves. Captain Sunlight's polite greeting prompted me to look up in the time to see what looked like a lobster the size of a horse come splashing towards us. I clamped down on a startled yelp. Professional calm, I reminded myself. This is entirely normal. I did a pretty good job of pretending to be calm while I set down the box I was holding and went back for more. Sunlight kept up small talk and handled payment, both thanks to technological aid, a translator and a credit screen with some impressive waterproofing. The voice that came from the speakers was almost too deep to hear. It reminded me of my aunt's favorite whale impression. Thank you for your use of your time, the client said. Now previous delivery people arrived at high tide, leaving us with a long walk to the burrow. A little crustacean leggy waved back at the water, where I assumed the doorway lurked. Now that I thought about it, I could almost make out a darker spot amongst the waves. And that's not so much a lobster as a huge shrimp, I decided. 
setting down another box. Looks like it should have some bright colors in the sun too. The starlight didn't illuminate much, but the faint glow from the ship's cargo hold showed hints of red, blue, and green. And far too many legs, honestly. But you didn't hear that from me. Last one, Z announced, resting a box against the others. Would the esteemed client like to confirm the count? The client did, waving two legs while counting. Confirmed. I am pleased to do business with all of you. Captain Sunlight started to say something else polite, but the client wasn't done talking. And it is pleasant to see such a lovely being of light. With the way all those legs moved, it took me a heartbeat to realize that she meant me. But what? I blurted out. The rest of the crew were confused too. Being of light? asked the captain tactfully. Yes, and those charming stripes too. It was all I could do not to ask what again. I just looked at Sunlight, wondering if I was being pranked. If so, she didn't look in on the joke. I, uh, can't say that I noticed, she told the client. Your eyes are different, aren't they? Asked that deep voice with deeper sympathy. Um, must be. You'll have to take my word for it, then. You two little ones blend in with the surroundings, while you, friend, look more like an artfully painted land skimmer. She said to Z, who looked like he had decided to take it as a compliment. But you, you glow like a gentle moon, with all the curves of a crashing wave across your surface. My night has been enriched with the view. Um, thank you, I managed. My, my pleasure. I will be sure to request such a prompt and pleasurable Acarius for my next delivery. I thank you. And we thank you, Captain Sunlight said. We'll be on our way. I trust that you can get the boxes into your home without trouble. Oh, yes. This will be fine, said the client with more leg waves. I wasn't even sure which part of that complicated face to look at. May you have safe travels. With more polite words from sunlight, we re-entered the hover car and took seats in an even hotter air. The door shut, the engine started, and a very welcome breeze wafted in. Sunlight eased away from the beach at a tactful speed before gunning it towards the ship. No one spoke until the sea was out of view behind a dune. Glowing, exclaimed Paint. Stripes? She... She didn't mean heat vision, Z wanted to know. Can't be, Sunlight said from where she drove madly. She compared you to a nice paint job, remember? Yes, she should, Z said. But was that different thing she was seeing when looking at me? Hard to say, Sunlight said. Robin? I have no idea, I burst out. This is the first time I've heard any of it. Is there a chance she's joking? I don't think so said Captain Sunlight. All the courier reviews of her behavior are top-notch. If she was the type to lie like that, then surely she would have done it before. But, but Stripes, I asked, sticking a forearm into the aisle. You've seen me. What, what Stripes? I don't even have that much body hair. You, you, you don't glow in the dark either, said Z, staring with a kind of intensity that only someone with truly gigantic bug eyes can. You reflect a little starlight right now, but... But with all the grossness you're exuding, but I doubt that's what she meant. I laughed. You know, uh, people do sometimes describe sweating as glowing, but it's really not meant to be taken literally. Paint leaned close, all curiosity. Does something in your sweat, Flores? No, I said. Nothing about me does. This is absurd. We can check the wiki as soon as we get back in range, said Captain Sunlight. The ship's knowledge banks are pretty good. But let's not kid ourselves. I can't wait, Paint said. My money is on sweat. I shook my head and finished the water bottle. With the way sunlight was driving, we made it to the ship quickly indeed. Paint was already out of the car and telling the rest of the crew about it, while I barely stood up. I exited to several other curious faces, immediately telling them, no, I had no idea. Normally after a kind of delivery, I would have gone to wash up. 
but this time I grabbed a towel to wipe off the sweat and to wear a shawl in the much cooler spaceship air. Captain Sunlight was calling for top speed, and she got it. Good thing we'd be refueling soon, because I was pretty sure we'd used up a solid chunk of the reserves. But we were back in range of easy broadcasts in record time. Everyone who didn't have to be somewhere else crowded into the meeting room with the big info screen. And we all learned that humans freaking glow. Just too dim for anyone to see, unless they have an extra super special eyes. The kind of eyes that can pick up the seams from cell division that are usually just as invisible. What the heck? I said, staring at the screen. Sunlight had called up both topics side by side, and everyone was reading at different speeds. I skimmed enough to be unsure of what emotion to settle on. It's not sweat, Z said. Well, it's also not heat vision, Paint retorted. It may sometimes coincide with heat vision, Captain Sunlight said, pointing as she read. Tied into the metabolism changing throughout the day. Human metabolism creates heat, right? So it could be both. But... It said it's not. I still win the bet, Z insisted. Oh, you didn't even make a bet, Paint said. Murr sat beside me, flipping a tentacle in amusement. It's a bet. We don't have anyone with those extreme eyes on board, he told me. We could send the pair of you into dark areas, and she could see by your light. I shook my head. This is just bizarre. I can't believe nobody told me. The squiddy alien shrugged a pair of tentacles. If you can't see it, and neither can most of civilized galaxy, I am not surprised that it isn't common knowledge. What I'd want to know is, as he spoke louder, Hey, Z, do you want to get glowing paint to decorate yourself with now, since somebody is outshining you? Z angled his antenna to glare. Maybe. Oh, oh, me too, said Paint, to no one's surprise. Can we do the walls too? It'll be great if we ever lose power. I huffed a laugh. <laughs> Look what you started. You're welcome, Mer said. Care to see who can paint some nice new decorations in the highest and most creative places? Absolutely. You know I can reach the top of the engineering crevices by putting a foot on each wall and shuffling upwards, right? Murk cackled. <laughs> and you haven't seen what a properly motivated strung arm can do. Extra points for painting a likeness of Z. Somewhere you'd never find. You are on. We shook on it, which is an absolutely disgusting experience when tentacles are involved. But I managed to pretend it wasn't. Gotta be professional, you know. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.